paper for this afternoon is in anatomy of the larynx. Okay. I, I took this, I don't know if you have this book, no? I got this from this book. It, 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 this is what is this what you use? This yes, the, the Snell, sorry, the Snell Clinical Anatomy book. So I based my lecture mostly on that book, although although some image I, I got from the internet. So if I'm talking too fast or I'm talking too soft, just tell me. No? And for the questions, you can you can just reserve your questions and um, I'll just entertain it after the lecture. No, you can write it down or maybe you can just put it on the on the tech chat box. So to start, the larynx is a they say tubular structure, which is formed by nine cartilages and held together by ligaments and seven muscles. Some books say eight, some books say seven muscles, but in our book we use it seven, so we'll we'll follow seven muscles. No? It is lined by mucous membrane. It is found inferior to the tongue and the hyoid bone. So this is a representative picture. This muscular structure is your tongue. This bone is your or, or, this bone is your hyoid bone. Um, the, the larynx is just below it, no? Inferior to the tongue and the hyoid bone. It measures approximately four to five cm in length. It spans the fourth to sixth cervical vertebral bodies. No? Essentially, it functions as a sphincter. So guarding the entrance of the trachea. Secondarily, it works as the organ of voice. It is connected to the superior part of the trachea inferiorly, which is your trachea below, and it's super connected to the laryngeal part of the pharynx above. So this is, can you see my arrow? No, you can see the image. No, guys, can you see my arrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yes, the pharynx, the well, laryngeal part of the pharynx is here. No. It's, so the larynx connects the pharynx and it connects to the, the trachea. Okay, so this is the uh, nasal contain, hard palate, the soft palate. This is the oral vestibule, the oral space, your tongue, your hyoid bone, your larynx, your pharynx, okay, and your esophagus. So this is for your orientation. This is a sagittal view, no? When you cut on the side, this is this, this, like this image, no? Cut on the on the on on the midline to make it to make two halves and then you see the inside. This is a sagittal view. Okay. So I mentioned there are nine cartilages, no? There were three large unpaired cartilages and three small paired cartilages to make up nine cartilages. So six dito, six unpaired cartilages, three and unpaired cartilages. So they are the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, and the epiglottis. Now for the smaller paired cartilages, we have the arytenoids, the corticulate, and the cuneiform cartilages. The thyroid and the cricoid cartilages are hyaline cartilages. Okay? The arytenoids and corticulates are hyaline cartilages. So these are tougher cartilages compared to the elastic cartilages, which are more flexible. No? So the, elastic the elastic cartilages are the... Corticulate, arytenoids, corticulate, and cuneiform. Yeah, yeah, yeah epiglottis and the cuneiform okay so for better for your better for you, so you can easily remember no ec elastic cartilage elastic cartilage epiglottis and cuneiform no Para mas madali. so the rest are higher limit okay ec ec lang this is a representative image you can see the larynx from from up front from the anterior view you can see the larynx from behind posterior view and the sagittal view as well so for your uh, orientation, this is the thyroid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage. We have the tracheal cartilages. We have the thyroid membrane, thyrohyoid membrane, sorry. This is the hyoid bone, thyrohyoid membrane, the midline thyrohyoid ligament, the cricothyroid um, membrane, the cricothyroid ligament, the cricotracheal ligament. And on the back side, you will see the smaller um, cartilages. We have the corniculate. We have the cuneiform, the corniculate rides the arytenoids, which have the two arytenoids. These are the paired cartilages, which are seen from the hand. We have the epiglottis, which is leaf shape. We have the larger back part of the cricoid and the tracheal cartilages. No? On, on, on sagittal view, we see that the epiglottis is leaf shape. No? This is the entrance to the tracheal, um, to the trachea, to the trachea, which is oh, sorry, to the larynx. This is the entrance, no? this, uh, this, this area. This is the inlet. The inlet is above the vocal ligament. Okay, we will discuss it further later. This is for your orientation. So the three paired on the back, the smaller ones, the, the unpaired up front. Okay, this is just to orient you, no? Um, I, anyway, is this is this lecture video? I mean, nakasave ba to? 
so that you can play it again later. No. Hello. Hello. No, for that. Nakalag, nakalbi, nakasave ba to? Is this being saved or this is being recorded? No. I think someone is recording na po oh, Okay, that's good. That's good. So you can you can play it back later. Huh? Kaya, kaya na bahala. I don't know how to record this. Okay, sige. This is just a representative view, no? That is to orient yourself as to the as to the location of the larynx in relation to the thyroids and in relation to the great vessels. So this is your larynx at the midline. The thyroid is just up front, no? The right and left lobes. So this is the isthmus. We have the thyroid. This is the trachea, uh, the larynx. Okay. And on this side, we have the great vessels, the carotids, and the jugular veins, no? It's, which is on the, just on the side of the, of the larynx. Okay? This is for your orientation as well. And first, we discuss first the thyroid cartilage, which is the largest laryngeal cartilage. It is shield-shaped, okay? It's, it's incomplete posteriorly, so if you can see from the back, it's open, no? The anterior surface has a thick ridge, the midline ridge, okay? Which represents the laryngeal prominence. This ridge is easily palpable. This is comprised. This is this is um, this is also your Adam's apple, you know, which is more prominent in males and females. So on your on your on your homes, try to palpate your Adam's apple. Try to hold your Adam's apple and then swallow to see that it's moving. You know? the, the palpable part is your laryngeal prominence, actually your Adam's apple. Okay. We have um, horns on both sides, on on both ed ends of the thyroid. You have the inferior horn, which articulates with the cricoid cartilage. And the superior horn, which has ligamentous attachments to the epiglottis and the small laryngeal cartilages. No, so this is your thyroid cartilage. Important structure: the laryngeal prominence or Adam's apple, which is the part of which is the palpable area. Okay, and it's incomplete on the back side. Next is the cricoid cartilage, which is the second largest. The thyroid cartilage sits above the cricoid cartilage. It is ring shaped. It is a complete ring whose posterior portion is greatly expanded. So if you can see this image, no, the smaller po the anterior portion is smaller than the, than the posterior portion, okay, which provides extra support because of the absence of a posterior portion of the thyroid cartilage, no. So this is your cricoid, okay, on the back. This is larger. The cricoid and the thyroid cartilage protect the glottis and the entrance to the trachea, and their broad surfaces provide attachments of the uh, important laryngeal muscles and ligaments, no. So, cricoid cartilage or ring shaped cartilage. Next is your okay. next is your epiglottis. The third um, unpaired cartilage is your epiglottis. This leaf shape is this is a view from behind. No? It's a view, uh, leaf shape which projects superior or above the glottis. The epiglottic cartilage to support it. So, so the, the, the epiglottic cartilage has ligamentous attachments. To the anterior and superior borders of the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone, no? so it's it's intimately related to the to the thyroid cartilage and to the hyoid bone. So during swallowing, the larynx is elevated and the epiglottis folds back over the glottis. It's like the, it's like the cap of the glottis, no, which provide which prevents entry of the liquids on solid food into the passageways. So this is the view from behind of the epiglottis. Okay, uh, next we go to the we go to the Next, we go to the three paired cartilages, no, as we mentioned, the arytenoids, the corniculates, and the cuneiform cartilages, no, three paired cartilages. First, we mention is the arytenoid. It's this one. It's the pyramid-shaped cartilage, which articulates with the superior portion the, of the cricoid, no. Sorry. Which which articulates with the superior portion? There's a joint between the cricoid and the inferior portion of the arytenoid. No, it's a synovial joint actually. Next is the corniculate, which is horn-shaped. So corny, horny, corniculate uh, cartilage, it's horn-shaped and sits on top of the arytenoid cartilage. No? Next is the cuneiform, which is wedge-shaped or rod-shaped, no? which is which lies in the aryepiglottic fold. This fold is the is the membrane that spans the epiglottis, no? this is your epiglottis, and your arytenoid. So aryepiglottic fold, this is the my membrane jam. And your cuneiform cartilage sits on top of it, while your current clip sits on top of the arytenoids. Okay, these are the paired uh, uh, cartilages of the larynx. No, there is there is now this the cricoid and the larynx has a synovial joint, which permits movement, rotation, and abduction. So this is a mobile joint. This joint, okay, mobile. Okay. 
Next, we have the membranes and ligaments of the larynx. No? So the larynx is composed of a series of intrinsic ligaments bind, which bind all nine cartilages together to form the larynx. No? First, we mentioned the thyrohyoid membrane. Thyrohyoid, which is a membrane that connects the thyroid cartilage to the hyoid bone. In the midline, it becomes thicker, no? which, which becomes the median thyrohyoid ligament. The midline is thicker than the rest. This membrane is pierced on both sides by vessels and nerves. Okay. Next, we go to the cricothyroid membrane, which connects the cricoid to the thyroid. The cricoid to the thyroid. Okay? This cricoid cartilage uh, has a thick and mid midline as well, which, which, which is called the midrain cricothyroid ligament. Now, remember this in the term, huh? the thyroid and the cricothyroid ligament. We will mention it later. Next is the cricoid ligament, which connects the cricoid to the tracheal ligament, so to the first thing of the trachea. So these are some of the examples of the, of the, of the membranes of the larynx. Okay, next is the quadrangular and the cricothyroid. We mentioned the cricothyroid ligament earlier, not this one. This is uh, important because the quadrangular membrane, which is a membrane between the epiglottis and the arytenoids, no? this membrane, this is your aryepiglottic wall, and the membrane beneath it is the quadrangular membrane. No? The inferior end, so this is superior, this is superior. The inferior end becomes free, it's not attached to anything, it, it, it becomes the vestibular ligament. Now, this ligament becomes the interior support of the vestibular fold. Now, remember the vestibular fold. We will mention it later. This is important. No? Quadrangular membrane, expanding the epiglottis and the arytenoids as again, with a free interior margin. It is inelastic. No? Sturdy shaft. Now, we go to the other side. The cricothyroid ligament, which this one. The cricothyroid ligament, the median, um, the median thickened portion of the membrane. It is a, its lower margin is attached to the cricoid. No? However, its superior margin, instead of attaching to the thyroid, ascends medially to it. No? It doesn't attach to the thyroid necessarily, but it passes in the, in the medial aspect. And its, free, its superior end becomes free also, uh, as opposed to the inferior end here, no? free. No? It is at the, as, it is the other side, it's the upper end that's free, and becomes the vocal ligament. So vocal ligament here, vestibular ligament here. The vocal ligament forms the interior support of the vocal fold. So vestibular fold, vocal fold. Okay? So, are, are you still following me? Am I still clear? Hello? Yes, Doc. Okay, good. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, next. Now, we have the vestibular fold and the vocal folds, okay? So, vestibular fold is an inelastic, it's inelastic, a sturdy structure to prevent the foreign objects from entering the glottis, no? It's provide protection to the more delicate vocal folds. The vestibular folds, however, doesn't play any part in sound production. Therefore, it's often referred to as the false vocal folds, okay? Vestibular, false. And the vocal folds are elastic, it's movable. So this is the one involved primarily with the production of sound. So for this reason, they are to, referred to as the true vocal folds. False vocal folds, true vocal folds. This is a picture of it, you know? So orient yourself first. This is a representative image. This is a laryngoscope image. So for... for uh, uh, for some of you who've already done um, in, in, uh, intubation, you can, you're familiar with this picture, no? So this is your epiglottis to orient yourself. This is your epiglottis. This is your epiglottis. So balik tad siya, like, just, just, just imagine na lang. This is the epiglottis. This is the epiglottis. Um, above the epiglottis is your tongue. Okay. This is your tongue on this side. Above it. Tapos, this is your um, this is your true vocal cord. This is your false vocal cord on the side. You have your cuneiform cartilages. You have your Corniculate cartilages, which sits on the arytenoid cartilage, correct? This is your aryepiglottic fold, which spans the, the epiglottis and the um, arytenoids. No? The spaces on the side are your piriform fossa. This is the trachea. This is the space to the trachea. Well, same as this side also. Orient yourself down. Piriform, corniculate, uniform, airway, through, false, and epiglottis. The tongue is right here, okay? Now, the vestibular fold is fixed on each side, no? It is formed by a mucous membrane that covers the vestibular ligament, yung kaninang free end of the of the no, of the quadrangular membrane. It is covered by a mucous membrane. No? It is vascular, therefore it's pink. This one in this picture, it's fleshy. No? So it's pink or fleshy so it's because it's vascular. The vocal fold is mobile, is a vascular, and is white in color. So during it moves during respiration. So when you do laryngoscopy, you see it moving, and it's white color. It's easily visible. Okay. Now, the gap between the folds is the entrance to the trachea. It's called the rima glottidis or the, simply the glottis. No? The rima glottidis or the glottis. It is the narrowest part of the larynx. 
measuring approximately 2.5 centimeters from front to back, no? It's lesser in females. Narrowest part in adults. So for children, the narrowest part is somewhere somewhere lower in the level of the cricoid cartilages, no? Okay. If you're, if you're done with this image, I'll, I'll proceed. Now for the muscles of the larynx, diba, we mentioned we have we have seven, seven in our book, eight in other books, seven intrinsic, and um, um, I don't know how many extrinsic. So it's, we divide the muscle of the larynx to extrinsic and intrinsic. So for the extrinsic muscle groups, actually you will you will um, you will encounter this when you have a lecture in the anterior neck compartment. No, you uh, you have a more detailed uh, lecture of this. We just mentioned here, suffice to say, because it's 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 involved in in the in the in movement of the larynx okay so we divide the muscles of the larynx to the extrinsic and the intrinsic the extrinsic muscle groups this muscles primarily move the larynx up and down during swallowing you know? many of these muscles are attached to the hyoid which is in turn attached to the thyroid cartilage by the pyrohyoid membrane so therefore if you move the hyoid you move the larynx Tama? remember the statement you move the hyoid you move the larynx next we have the intrinsic muscle group we have seven the two muscles are, are involved in opening or closing the inlet, right? the entrance to the larynx, the inlet, the oblique arytenoids and the thyroepiglottic muscles. And the, 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 the remaining five move the vocal folds. So they open, they close the vocal folds. The cricothyroid, thyroarytenoid, or the vocalis muscle, transverse arytenoid muscle, lateral and posterior cricoarytenoid muscles. Okay? Now for the extrinsic muscles, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten muscles, no? Seven for elevation, three for depression. No? Okay, so we have the digastric. If you can see the image, just review the image later on. No, uh, these pictures I got from Netter. If you have the Netter book or ebook, you can review it later. Man. Or you can re you can review this lecture later. Whenever it's good. Digastric. We have the anterior belly. If you can see my arrow and the posterior bend. Next is the mylohyoid. This one. We have the geniohyoid. This one. We have the stylohyoid, this one. These are elevators of the hyoid bone. These are located suprahyoid or above the hyoid. Okay? So they pull up the hyoid. The remaining three muscles are, are, are primarily elevators of the pharynx. Hence the name staltingopharyngeus, stylopharyngeus, or palatopharyngeus. No? They are included here because in, in, in elevating the, the, la, the, the pharynx, they also elevate the larynx. So sinaman sila dito. Okay. These are more deeper in location on the, on the posterior side of the neck, and it's more um, it's more um, lateral as well, deeper and lateral compared to this muscle. No, we'll, we'll show it later. Now for the depressors, we have the sternothyroid, this one, sternohyoid, this one, these two, these are paired muscles, no? the omohyoid, superior belly, inferior belly. Now, if you can see, um, they are long, they're slender. This is actually referred to as the strap muscles. You will encounter again the strap muscles when you lecture on the anterior neck muscles next time. No, so for this uh, for this lecture, we will just involve involve the three: sternothyroid, sternohyoid, omohyoid. Actually, there's a fourth one: thyrohyoid. This is part of the. Uh, actually, the the strap muscles, their function, their main function is to depress the hyoid bone. Iba sabi ko you depress the hyoid bone, you move the larynx. However, we did not include the thyrohyoid because it is a, it, it, because of its short course. It's only connected from the thyroid from thyroid cartilage here to the hyoid bone. So malit lang siya. Although it depresses the 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 the, the, the hyoid bone uh, together with the rest, it doesn't give enough ever enough effort to depress the larynx. So that's why it's not included. No, so that's only the three for the for the suprahyoid for the infrahyoid strap muscles. Okay, minus the thyrohyoid. Okay, guys, are we clear? Yes. Okay, good. So you can just review this image later. Huh? For the inter origin insertion, don't worry, I will not include in, the, uh, in, in if, if ever I give an exam. No? Anterior neck muscles, masasama. Okay, this is just for or, for proper, try to um, orient yourselves with the images. No? Again, these are, this is the images of the, of the stylopharyngeus on the back side. Oh, yeah, no? Stylopharyngeus here, the selphingopharyngeus here, and the uh, palatopharyngeus here. No? These are the longitudinal muscles of the pharynx. No? So you have your suprahyoid muscles, MSGD, for better remembering. Infrahyoid muscles for your depressors of the muscles, which are the thyroid and homohyoid. Okay, are we good? Just forget yourself with the picture as well. Now, for your intrinsic muscle groups, we have seven. Right? The two first muscles 
close or open the inlet, the oblique arytenoids, which is the crisscrossing muscle, which slings around the, the thoracic inlet. So when it contracts, it closes. Parang tali siya, no? It closes the, the inlet. So, so narrow, it narrows the inlet, the oblique arytenoids. Next is the thyroepiglottic muscle, which widens the inlet. The thyroepiglottic muscle is located this one. It's below the below the inlet, no? So when you contract it, why it, it opens it wide? No, it opens it wide when it contracts. Okay. The next five muscle opens the uh, closes the vocal cords. We have the cricothyroid muscle. Okay, these muscles, which tenses the vocal cords. We have the thyroarytenoid or the vocalis muscle, which relaxes the vocal cord. This one, thyroarytenoid, thyroarytenoid, just below the thyroepiglottic, no thyroarytenoid. We have the cricoarytenoid muscle which the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle which adducts or closes the vocal cords it's again it's below the thyroarytenoid we have the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle which opens the vocal cord this one it's the paired muscle here and the transverse arytenoids which approximates the arytenoid cartilages this one it's below the crisscrossing oblique arytenoids we have the transverse arytenoids okay again orient yourself to the, orient yourself to the image and just review the picture later on okay guys no, it's in page, and I forgot the page in your book. There's a table there. You just orient yourself, no, for the origin and the search of this muscle. No? I didn't include it here. You, you won't miss it. It's a table in your book, no, for the origin and the insertion of your muscle, of this muscle. Anyway, I won't ask much of, the, of, of those muscles. No? Now, I mentioned earlier the, the primary function of the larynx is a sphincter. No? Secondary lung in voice production. So we have two sphincters. We have the inlet sphincter which is above the glottis, no? the inlet sphincter, which is used during swallowing. No? So this is a representative image of food being swallowed. So this is your food bolus. No? It's, it sits on top. It's pushed to the back by the, it's pushed to the hard palate by the, by the tongue. No? Okay? As a bolus of food is, pulled, is passed backwards, the larynx, is, the larynx beneath the tongue is pulled forwards. No? So as the, as the food then passes through the larynx, the inlet of the larynx is closed. So this is the sphincter function. The inlet of the larynx is closed by the oblique arytenoids and some aryepiglottic muscles. No? Next is the, the epiglottis is pulled backward and serves as a cap of the laryngeal inlet. Na siya. You, you can see the epiglottis as the, as the football uh, um, moves to this side. The epiglottis is pulled to form a cap on this area. Okay? Now the food or fluid that enters the esophagus by passing over. So it passes over the epic the close epiglottis or to the sides as i mentioned earlier we have the piriform fossa on the sides no the sides of the larynx you can pass over or on the sides this is how you swallow now next the second um, sphincter function is that of the remoglottidis no so first function is in the uh, first sphincter is in the inlet above the glottis now the second sphincter is the remoglottis itself or the glottidis itself no it is useful during coughing or sneezing so follow this uh, follow this uh, diagram follow this line first you inspire and then the vocal folds are closed no then the muscles of expression on the chest are made to strongly contract no this inter this increases the intrathoracic pressure um of the of the of which this increases increases the intrathoracic pressure while the while the glottis is closed no so para siyang soft drinks that when you shake this you increase the pressure inside no and then you suddenly open the vocal folds, suddenly open the lid of the soft drinks, then out outbursts the, the, the contents, no? Outbursts the out, out goes the the yung, yung contents, no, yung air that, that's trapped inside. The sudden release of compressed air will dislodge the foreign particles or the mucus that's inside the tracheal bronchial tree. So you, that's when you cough or you sneeze, no? This is what you actually do. you close the glottis, no. So when the when the when the mucus and the foreign particle um, reaches the pharynx, no, you, you decide whether you spit or you swallow it. Okay. Okay. So focus in this image: a child trying to defecate and a child of a, a woman who's uh, uh, trying to bear a child. No. Valsalva maneuver is forced expiration against a closed glottis. No. So you uh, you inhale. And then you close your glottis and you try to try to push out the air on the closed glottis so so because the glottis is closed at the same time 
you contract your abdominal muscles, right? You contract your muscles, tapos you build up pressure in your abdomen, intra-abdominal pressure. So you, the movement of the diaphragm, upward movement of the diaphragm is prevented. So this will market the diaphragm because there's, there's increased air also in the thorax, no? The, the diaphragm remains in place. So the, the intra-abdominal pressure does not dissipate. It remains constant. It, it remains constant, no? So the intra-abdominal pressure helps you to excrete out whatever you want to excrete, no? To excrete this, this little girl or this woman. To help them excrete out whatever they want to excrete. So after prolonged effort, sometimes you need to excuse, you need to, to release some air, just like this kettle, no? Or nag-i-increase na yung, intra, intra, yung, yung force inside or yung pressure inside and the gas inside. May gas na lumalabas dun sa spot, no? In the form of a whistle, okay? So, so you open, in, in humans, you open your, your glottis for a little bit just to exert, to, to just to release out a little bit pressure, no? In that way, instead of a weasel, in, in you in humans, you you actually release you actually release a grunt, a grunting sound. Okay, if you if you're familiar with the grunting sound with your when you're you know. so remember when you when you go to the restroom now and you do your business there. Remember this lecture. Huh? You will remember this lecture. Sometimes when you're in a public cubicle and you hear someone in the next cubicle doing a grunting sound, pwede mo siyang katukin. Sabi mo sir, open ng glottis mo. <laughs> okay. The next uh, function of the larynx is the voice production. No? No, the entire larynx is involved in sound production. So the entire larynx, by vibrating its walls, no? the larynx is involved in sound production by vibrating its walls. There is intermittent release of expired air, expired air between the adducted vocal folds. Adducting meaning closed. No? Air is released between the closed vocal folds, resulting in their vibration. Vibration of the vocal folds also vibrate, given they are elastic, so they're easily vibrate. And therefore, the sound is produced. No? Now, the frequency and the pitch depends on the length and the tension of the vocal ligaments, no? So, the vocal cords in male are thicker and longer. So, therefore, they produce lower tones compared to that of females. Now, the call, the, when the voice is released from the larynx, the quality of the voice is further amplified or resonated by the, with the use of the pharynx, the mouth, and the paranasal sinuses. So, diba, when you have colds or you have sinusitis, naging ngungo ang, ang, ang sound because, because of the pathology in, with, because of obstructed sinuses, you fail to resonate the voice, so it, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it becomes, it comes out normal, it comes out differently when the normal, no? Furthermore, the soft palate, the tongue, the floor of the mouth, and the teeth, and the lips all contribute to the control and modification of the sounds, so in the, pronounce, in the, in the pronunciation of the letters, no? These organs also help in the production. Now, the five internal, um, internal uh, intrinsic muscle groups, okay, the five, we have the, the two muscles that contract, oh, sorry, the two muscles that contract to tense and relax the vocal ligament, okay, so our gentle tail, we have the small arytenoid muscles, triangular, we have the large spiral cartilage, this is a, this is a sagittal view again, huh? this is the vocal cord, which is your tricoid, no? so when you tense your tricothyroid, you raise the pitch, you, you tense your vocal ligament when, when the cricothyroid muscle contracts you tense your vocal ligament you pull it okay it, this raises the pitch okay the soprano okay conversely for thyroid muscles you relax the vocal ligament you relax the vocal cord okay so there's uh, forward movement this is backward movement no? this is forward movement to, to relax the vocal ligament the vocal cord which lowers the pitch sa mga baho okay so for these three muscles, they are involved in opening and closing the remote glottis. Again, for your orientation, this is your thyroid cartilage, this is your adenoid cartilage, this is your vocal cords, okay, this is your uh, glottis, okay? Now, the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles opens the remote glottis wide, okay? This is, they, they rotate to open wide the remote glottis. Now, the lateral cricoarytenoids, they close the remote glottis by, okay, by rotating as well, okay? Now the arytenoideus, or the, the transverse arytenoids, they oppose the arytenoid uh, cartilage, no? also helping in closing the, in adducting the vocal cords. Okay? This one here, my space, but it was a posterior part of the glottis. This one is completely closed. Okay? Are we clear? Hello, guys, are we clear? Yes. Yes, doc. So, opening or closing of the glottis involves rotational movement of the arytenoids, no? So you rotate the arytenoid, uh, you open or close the glottis. No? This moves the vocal folds apart or together. 
Now, for respiration, now you have your four images of the glottis. No? When quiet breathing, it's like this. No? The vocal folds are abducted slightly, no? slightly, and the glottis is triangular in shape. No? This is the glottis, it's triangular in shape. This is the vocal cord, the glottis, the, thy the thyroid cartilage, the retinoids again. Slightly open, slightly abducted now, no? slightly open. Now, on deep, no, deep inspiration, you need um, um, a bigger space no, for the air. So the focal force are maximally abducted. No? And the glot and glotus appears diamond shaped. Okay? This, is your, this is your glotus on full inspiration. Now, in speech and singing, okay, this, is how you, this is how your glotus appears. No? The arytenoids are opposed together. The vocal folds, oh, sorry, malik. The vocal folds are also opposed together. Okay. So when you speak, there is intermittent release. So intermittent release on a close vocal cord will, will produce speech. And prolonged release on a close vocal cord will produce singing. Okay. It's pareho sa lang close. Speech is intermittent. Singing is prolonged. Okay. Now when you whisper, the vocal cords are closed. However, you open the posterior part of the glottis, no? With, the, with, your, with, your, with the use of the transverse carotenoid muscles again. Okay. That's, that is how you whisper. Ito yung insulin when you whisper. Okay? This is how you phonate and you respire. Now, we mentioned that the, the larynx is covered with mucous membrane. Uh, it is ciliated columnar epithelium that is similar to the rest of the tracheobronchial tree, if you remember. The tracheobronchial tree is, is, is made up of two stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells. Okay, this one is similar, no? ciliated columnar epithelium. Now, the vocal cords is subject to repeated trauma. No? So this, the vocal cord is different. It's, it's composed of stratified squamous epithelium. So must, it is, this is uh, more resistant to wear and tear. Okay? The vocal cords in the midline. Nerve supply. Uh, we have the sensory and the motor nerves. So sensory for, the, for, for, the, for, the, for those above the vocal cords is from the internal laryngeal branch of the superior laryngeal branch of the vagus nerve. Now, for below the vocal cord, sensory is, is provided by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now, if foreign material reaches the vocal or the vestibular cord, in some area ng rima got to this, no? if the foreign material reaches there, the coughing reflex is triggered. Uh, coughing reflex is triggered. Well, it is the internal br uh, branch of the superior laryngeal branch of the vagus is the one that's responsible for triggering the cough reflex, no? which prevents the material from entering the glottis. Now, for the motor nerves of the intrinsic muscles, again, for the extrinsic muscles, I will not discuss uh, more of those. It will be discussed in a, in a later lecture. Okay? So for the intrinsic muscles, uh, except for the cricothyroid muscle, it is, it is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay? Recurrent laryngeal nerve for all the intrinsic muscles except for the cricothyroid. Now, the cricothyroid is supplied by the external, uh, as opposed to the internal sensory here, external motor here of the, of the, of the superior laryngeal branch of the vacuous nerve. Okay? So remember these nerves. Blood supply is simple, just two. Superior laryngeal artery, okay, which comes from the superior thyroid artery, this one, superior laryngeal artery, which supplies the upper half of the larynx, and the inferior laryngeal artery, which comes from the inferior thyroid artery, which supplies the lower half of the larynx. Okay, lang. Lymphatics. Um, drainage goes to deep cervical lymph nodes, superior for the upper half, inferior for the lower half. No? Deep cervical lymph nodes. Now, the larynx, um, this is an oriented cell first, you know, water breakdown. Oriented cell with the, the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, this is your superior laryngeal nerve. Okay, this is your recurrent laryngeal nerve. It's easy to remember because it's recurrent. It goes down and then it goes up. This is the right laryngeal nerve. This is the left laryngeal nerve. It goes down and it goes up. A difference lang is they have different paths, no? They go down. This one reaches the arch of the aorta. It loops around the arch of the aorta and the left main bronchus. Then it goes up. This one on the right, the laryngeal nerve loops over, loops around, okay, loops under, sorry, the common carotid artery, then goes up. Okay. As it goes up, it is intimately related to the thyroid cartilage. This, this statement is will is important because um, I will discuss later. This, um, sorry. This recurrent laryngeal nerve can go under or over or go through the thyroid, the thyroid artery of the thyroid cartilage, which is important because sometimes when you do complete resection of thyroid or complete thyroidectomy, so you have to legate the blood structures, no, the, the blood vessels, you have to legate the artery. Sometimes you also resect 
the laryngeal nerves, which becomes a problem later on, no? whether it's complete or partial resection, or whether, whether it's unilateral or bilateral. So, talagang pag-pull-pull talaga yung surgeon, mamimiss parehong sides talaga. So, that's gonna be a problem. No? So this is the it's how it's oriented at the back of the thyroid. This is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now, for problems arising from the from these nerves, or from the larynx, no? first, we, we have resection of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. We have unilateral complete, unilateral partial. We have bilateral complete and bilateral partial. Now, for unilateral complete section, for example, on this side, let's just say that the, the affected area is the left side of the laryngeal nerve, the current laryngeal the left side. No? The affected side is just midway between abduction and abduction. So midway, just lateral to the midline. Ito siya. It doesn't go maximally to the side. No? And then the, side, the midline between abduction and abduction. No? Speech and breathing is not greatly affected because the unaffected side compensates. So when you when you inspire, it bubukas siya ng maximally. So may space pa rin. So the left side, affected side is steady. No? Steady lang siya. So when you try to talk, you need to oppose your, or adopt your, your uh, vocal cords. The right side again compensates and moves further to the left. No? Uh, hindi siya sa midline. So you can still talk. You can still breathe. So yun nga lang. May, may paralysis ng left side. Next is the partial section. Uh, this is complete section. This is partial section. When this partial section, um, it's not completely understood why there is greater degree of paralysis of the abductors. Uh, so the, it's mostly mostly involved are the abductor muscles rather than the adductor muscles or the muscles that open rather than closing muscles. So there is an opposed pull of the adductors. No? So, wala siyang tiga open. Naka-steady naka, naka lang siya on the on, 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 on pull on midline, okay, on the midline, unopposed pull of the adductors. No, the affected side is is steady at the midline, but still you can still talk, you can still breathe because again the unaffected side can compensate, so it can it can move uh, away, it can abduct for you to breathe, and it can oppose. Actually, actually, pag nasa midline siya, there's no problem in, in speaking it eh, because it's actually at the midline. Okay, so the right side compensates. This is for partial. This is for complete section. Unilateral. Next, we go to bilateral complete section. So both sides assume the midway position. When you resect the recurrent laryngeal nerve on both sides completely, okay, the the vocal cords are put on the paramedian location, no? midway between abduction and adduction. Di siya gagalaw, ganyan lang siya. Okay? You can breathe because there's space, although but, although konti lang, you can still breathe. No? Although there is, it's it's greatly impaired. Let's see, maliit lang space mo. You can talk, pero konti lang because the the, the 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 vocal cords are not completely opposed to each other. No, you can still talk, you can still breathe, but you have you'll be having uh, you're having a difficult time. Okay. Next is the bilateral partial section. No? If the return laryngeal nerves are partially resected bilaterally, so there is unopposed pull again of the adductors. This time it's on both sides. This time it's also it's it's it, it's it's held at the midline, so it doesn't open. It's just, it's just closed all the time, no? This actually is the problem because you can't breathe. Wala sa space. You can talk, but you can't breathe. Yun ang problema. So there's acute dyspnea, acute breathlessness, and there's stridor, no? So in these cases, you need to do a um, operation. You need to open using a tricothyroidotomy or a tricostomy. We will discuss this later, these two procedures, no? And then, uh, two, uh, two other pathologies that are seen in the, of the larynx include laryngospasm, and the laryngeal edema, laryngeal spasm refers to a transient, uh, sudden spasm of the vocal cords. It's often a symptom of an underlying condition. Sometimes they can happen as a result of anxiety or stress, so a symptom of asthma or GERD, gastrointestinal disease, all vocal cord dysfunction. So this is just a trans transient disorder. No? It will be easily um, reversible after a few minutes. No? Next is laryngeal edema, swelling of the mucous membrane, particularly at the vocal ligaments. Namamagasya. Especially during anaphylactic shock, okay, allergies, post intubation complications, or the after radiation therapy for carcinoma at the rectum region. Again, the the, uh, the 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 closure is at the level of at the level of the vocal ligaments and the vocal cords. No? So edema at this level. Sometimes if these two is not reversible, you need to do again tricothyroidotomy and tracheostomy procedure. You need to open up again para makain yung patient. Okay, so for emergency procedures. We have two. We have tricothyrotomy and tracheostomy. Tricothyrotomy. This is more 
useful during um, emergency procedures because it's easily done. You can easily locate just below the uh, below the, the Adam's apple, no? Tricotyrotomy, tricoid thyroid, the space between the tricoid and the thyroid, no? You, you locate the, the Adam's apple and then you put a hole in, in just below it, the tricotyroid membrane. Although this is just for transient uh, transient airway access lang, no? This is not good for, for long-time use because it's unstable. So next is the tracheostomy. This is more common. We, we counted this more. This is actually if you cut between the tracheal cartilage, the sec the first and the second tracheal cartilage. This is more stable, no? You can actually you can actually use this for 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 long term uses, no? Even if the patient goes up to the hospital, now you can still have a hole here for breathing, okay, or for speaking, especially in patients who have um, cancer of the larynx and smokers. So you remove the larynx, so wala nang Wala nang, uh, wala nang voice production, no? Although, you can you can still vibrate it. This area, the remaining area can still vibrate. So you can still talk. Although it's in a, it's in a monotonous, it's in a, it's a different, uh, out of the normal kind of voice because the area doesn't reach the resonators. It's not amplified here in the mouth, in the, in the nasal uh, mucosa, in the paracetamol sinuses. It doesn't reach there. So dito lang siya, it's a monotonous shriek voice, no? It's just produced by vibrating the remaining tubes here. So, nakakapagsalta ka pa rin. I'm sure some of you have seen this already. Pag may butat mo sa, sa, sa neck, no? Uh, may microphone sila. I'll show you, I'll show you. So, this is the procedure to open up the, the airways, no? Okay, this patient has um, mass resected, no? He's a smoker who had laryngeal cancer. Can you see the image? Guys, can you see the image? Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to play it. Uh, this is a video from YouTube. Okay, this is a patient with a with a hole in the tire in the trachea, the tracheostomy tube. Okay, so this this actually functions for breathing and talking, no? Because the, the voice box has already been removed. Smoker to na may laryngeal cancer. Okay, listen to his voice. Listen to her voice for that story. Okay, Okay. Did you hear the video, guys? No, no. Did you see the video? Wala pa audio. Wala pa audio? Oh, shoot. Bakit? Wala po, no. You didn't hear the sound? Sayang naman. Anyway, it's just a monotonous voice. You can just play this. You can just look for it. It's, it's this name, no? Uh, you can just type it in the YouTube. I get this from YouTube naman. So. Just, just listen to the voice of patients like this, no? Para si, if you know, Stephen Hawking. Ganun ang voices niya. A monotonous voice. It's not resonated because the voice doesn't reach the mouth. So it, there's no amplification. It sucks. So, you, so these people actually need a microphone, no? When they put, they nakita nyo kanina, they, she had a device that she put on the on the hole so that you can hear, you can hear better. Because it's soft, no? But she can still talk. Still breathe. And that's the use of the tracheostomy. It's more, it, tracheostomy is a more permanent, uh, uh, Structure uh, uh, hole. Okay, this is the last slide. Okay. For the last 45 minutes, okay, we talked of this is a representative image no, of the anatomy of the whole body. You know, the bones lang yan, wala pang muscles, wala pang nerves. No? You know, for the last 45 minutes, we talked of this structure. Okay. Ito lang. This is just to give you a perspective of how vast and the anatomy. Of the human body is no, so marami raming ano to, marami raming basahan to. Forty five minutes, ito lang forty five centimeters lang of your body. Okay, so this is just a long journey. No? Okay. Kaya naman, ara lang. You can, you can do this. You can just you can you can you can get through. Kailangan lang masipag. Okay, this is your last slide. Um, I hope you learned you learned something from this lecture. If you have questions, you can. Ask me now, or you, if you want, if you're too shy, you can type it in the message box, or you can, you can, you can put, you can message in the, you can, you can message me in the FB group. I think I'm part of the. Do you have FB group, Tayo? Hello. We have a, we have an FB group for anatomy. I think I'm part of it. If you want, you can, you have, if you have questions, 
for this lecture and for succeeding lectures, you can type it there. If you're too shy, you're too ashamed.